So, as um, Mike said, I'm, a, I'm an ecologist. I study climate ecosystem interactions, and in particular, the feedbacks that arise as climate heats ecosystems, ecosystems change in response, and those changing ecosystems feedback to make the climate problem worse. And some of you may have seen an article that I and 40 other authors all co-authored. It came out in Nature last week. It got a lot of press on soil uh, carbon emissions as a result of heating soil causing carbon to flow from the soil to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Uh, the article actually underestimated because when you put 40 scientists together, they're going to reach a common denominator that uh, in many cases, including this, is um, uh, reaching a conclusion that is not as dire as many of us thought was scientifically warranted. But what I want to do is actually not continue with that theme, but rather um, I would like you for the moment to imagine that global climate science was wrong and that global warming is not a problem. Just suppose. I don't believe that. I am firmly convinced that it is a major problem and poses an existential threat to humanity. But what I want to point out is that there are many other existential threats to humanity, uh, lethal pandemics, toxification, the breakdown of governance, which I think we're seeing signs of throughout the Western world now. And I want to go back to somebody raised, I think you had raised the point about um, uh, even if climate science were wrong, there's all this air pollution and we would reduce it if we switched from fossil fuel to renewable. And this is an example of what we used to call the no regrets argument. The no regrets argument said, even if climate science were wrong, and none of us think it is wrong, but even if it were wrong, we should be doing more efficiency in energy use. We should be tr transitioning as rapidly as we can from fossil fuels to solar and wind. And the reason is that we would accrue, as a result of doing that, enormous numbers of other benefits. Uh, ending mountaintop removal, reducing acid rain, uh, reducing smog in the cities, uh, and the list goes on and on. Um, the other thing I want to say is that the, um, uh, this issue about drought that Jeff raised, the, we, we are going to have somewhere between 9 and 10 or 11 billion people on the planet if current trends are extrapolatable to over the next 70 years. And what I would point out, and this has been well documented, is that if you look historically at droughts that have uh, ended um, uh, dynasties and civilizations like the Mayan, in a world, those same droughts, which were not caused by fossil fuel burning, those same droughts in a world with 10 billion people would very likely cause billions of deaths and pose an existential threat to uh, humanity. So if we don't deal with the population problem, even if climate science is wrong, we will end up with uh, a catastrophe, uh, uh, gain, gain, civilization changing events. So I would, you know, much as I care about climate, I want to just emphasize this point that population matters, lethal pandemics matter, toxicity matters, uh, the uh, governance matters, and all of these problems are uh, exacerbated by population growth and by conventional, even solar energy. On a, with enough people on the planet, the solar solution becomes impossible and the land use effects become overwhelmingly uh, detrimental. So we've got to deal with population as a problem. It's, it's, it should be front and center in everything we do and say when we talk to the public about this. <laughs>